and to try and enrich the community. The living circumstances of my client during the time of the scene, they lived undisturbed, living in the hu as husband <coughs> and wife, running a business to support and help raise their children, also created jobs for the community at large. Mr. Ndevu suffers a high blood pressure and is receiving treatment for such. Ms. Ndevu, on the other hand, is healthy as a fitter. She holds a high status in the community as an employer who creates jobs and to seek and reach others in, in, their, in their years of running the business. This incident, no, 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 no act of this nature has ever happened in all the years of them running their business. My client's past. My client in the past has shown to have no previous convictions on both of them, Your Worship. In closing, Your Worship, my client seeks to seeks to cry, seeks to plead to this court for a lesser sentence, Your Worship, by showing <coughs> that he has indeed committed co committed himself to coming to court, Your Worship, and also that by this being held li very carelessly liable, his client, his employees have paid that admission of guilt fine. Therefore, we seek that the, the court provides a lesser sentence of that as a fine and, of course, of a wholly suspended sentence. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Thank you, Worship. The Eastern Cape Liquor Act 10 of 20, 2003 is very clear in so far as what should follow, as far as penalty, what should follow uh, conviction. I draw the attention of the court to section 61, subsection 1, uh, C, on the basis of the applicability of section 60, Your Worship, which is the, the defense has argued about. Uh, vicarious liability. I'm not sure if my learned friend has had a look on what should follow according to the legislation uh, <coughs> following the what should happen in terms of sentence. With your leave, I wish to, to read it out on to, into the record. Any person who contravenes or fails to comply with a provision <coughs> Um, section C, Section 59, 1H, or 60, or 60, must be guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment not exceeding five years, or to both such fine and imprisonment. In other words, I will add, Your Worship, that this shows the seriousness in which the legislature views a, a conduct such as this. He speaks the, of the maximum penalty as five years or fine or both. This is what the accused are faced with. Your Worship, uh, I note the personal circumstances as indicated on their behalf by my <coughs> And perhaps as was stated in the old case of State versus Zeal, personal circumstances, the seriousness of crime, and the interest of the society. On the personal circumstances, Your Worship, what I've noted on their behalf, a request from my learned friend that they be given fine or a lesser sentence or a sentence that is wholly suspended. I wish to draw the attention of this court that at no stage in her argument or submissions that this court has been told that uh, both accused are remorseful because they have been found guilty by this court. At no stage, I was waiting, recording, at no stage did both accused or any of the accused indicate to you that 
they are remorseful to this court for having been found guilty and for their conduct. Failure to take reasonable steps, as you've indicated in your judgment, at no stage. To me, a given, and especially in the face of what the legislature uh, has given, this is, it cannot fly on anyone's face unnoticed. So, <clears throat> before you, you have two unrepentant <coughs> accused persons who have been found. Because there's no submission or evidence or anything. These two are unrepentant as it stands in so far as what has happened at the New Benin so far as provision uh, of liquor to the, to the minor. What do we do now? The state is, is submitting. The offense is very serious. We submit that there is no other way that this matter can be viewed other than in a serious light. You've heard the evidence of Captain uh, when Captain Suarte when he took the stand. The prevalence of <laughs> minors visiting uh, taverns being provided liquor. That, that should add to the seriousness of this crime. Not only at Sinari Park, in your own jurisdiction, and perhaps even beyond, young people freely obtaining <clears throat> liquor in the outlets and uh, even taverns. And even uh, uh, the owners, tavern owners, allowing this conduct. Now, <clears throat> before you, you have the owner of the tavern as well as uh, the manager of that tavern who have been found guilty. Now, the interest of the society, the community at large, comes to the fore. And this will be my emphasis, Your Worship. You will know and you will remember since the beginning and the commencement of this trial, we've always had the company of our camera friends around us broadcasting this trial throughout the nation and beyond. Now, people, including those seated in the court gallery, <coughs> Perhaps some of them, for the first time, they want to know, they want to see, and, and they're going to experience some for the first time, see for themselves how our courts, the courts of South Africa, including this court, deal with tavern owners who contravenes a provision such as this. How, are, how our courts will deal with them. <clears throat> for a moment, if this court, for instance, <clears throat> say gives a light sentence as against what is prescribed by the legislature and how the legislature views this conduct, this is the message that this community, these people that are seated in front of you in the court gallery, will take out there to the community. This is the way. If, for instance, they are given just a, a, a slight fine of 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, the affluent tavern owners there, they will then begin to know how our courts deal with offenders such as this. And uh, it can either encourage or discourage provision or sale of liquor 
to the miners. Again, not only in your district of East London, it will go beyond, given the presence of full-blown cameras around since the commencement of uh, this trial. We, we will <coughs> ask your worship on behalf of the defenseless, the young people of your district, that is East London district, and even beyond, to send a message to the would-be offenders, to the, not only to the Nevu couple in front of you, a deterrent message should come out of this court today. That our courts will not tolerate, will be firm in their hands in sending a very clear and unambiguous message to the community that this kind of crime will not be tolerated. To the shipping queens and kings, to the tavern owners out there in your district, and again, even beyond, that strict, reasonable steps, they must take them to ensure and save the future of this country and the future of this district, which is the minors. Otherwise, why would the legislature prescribe so serious of the, the penalty if this was just something that one could get away with, with a slap on the wrist? And once again, I repeat, you have unrepentant people in front of you. Because I, there's no way in the submission that we are remorseful, your worship, for our conduct, and uh, we take note of your judgment uh, with respect. There's no way. There's no way. So, in your, in, in your kind of sentence that you have in mind, we will ask his worship to keep this in mind. The state wished to draw the attention of the court to the old case of R versus Kach, K-A-R-G, 1961, South African Law Reports at page 250. It was a then appellate division, your worship, where the judge remarked, it is not wrong that the natural indignation of interested persons and of the community at large should receive some recognition in the sentences uh, our courts again. For if sentences are too lenient, the administration of justice may fall into disrepute and injured persons. In this case, I would say the parent. Those who have children, their minors at home, they may be inclined to take the law into their own hands, close quote. <coughs> we admit your worship that uh, they are first offenders. But as indicated, as old as 1971 in the state versus uh, Debrain, 1971, volume one, SA report, it was a Northern Cape uh, decision, your worship. The court emphasized that there ought not to be a so called usual punishment for first offenders. There are quite a number of decisions. That you are a first offender does not mean 
that uh, you cannot go to prison. But that does not entitle you, given the severity on the charge on which you've been found guilty of. The state of worship will request that in your exercise of discretion on the appropriate sentence uh, to hand down this morning, please keep in mind that such sentence will not remain in this courtroom, in your courtroom, but it will be taken out to the community. It will be taken out to the townships around East London. It will be taken out to the villages that how our courts deal with tavern bosses or tavern owners if they allow minors entry and provision or sale of liquor to the minors. When it comes to minors, we are really dealing with the future of this country. We are really dealing with the future of this country. And without them, I would argue that this country has no future at all. We can't have drunk minors who freely <laughs> obtain or access liquor from the local shippings. We can't have that. It is incumbent of those who make profit from the sale of liquor to really take serious actions <clears throat> to guard against this habit. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. Oh, and yeah, sorry for the confusion when we started there. I forgot you had actually pointed out previously that there are no previous convictions. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Let's 
My thanks to both of you. Right, as I trust we all realize, in order to impose an appropriate sentence, it is important that the court uh, balance as far as possible the legitimate rights and interests of everybody affected. We are going to get Sierra's song about the the personal circumstances of the accused are always crucial. Well, admittedly, we have not heard a lot in that regard. We know that they are first offenders. Uh, no previous convictions of any nature whatsoever. They are a married couple who have four children. Uh, from the age of these children, I would assume that they are all still dependents. We've also heard that uh, the first accused has uh, health issues which uh, need to be borne in mind. And I have no problem accepting what we've been told about the accused personal circumstances as correct. The other major issues which the court must address are the crime which has been committed and the interests of the community affected by it. In this instance, these are largely connected. It has been pointed out by both sides that the Act is very strict as regards the responsibility of those persons conducting business in terms of the Liquor Act. I don't want to go through everything I said in the course of my judgment, but uh, some aspects do need to be uh, mentioned again. The accused, as far as we know, or as far as the evidence established, were not personally selling alcohol to anybody. How much knowledge they had of what was going on is impossible to say. We established beyond reasonable doubt that at least one minor was sold alcohol uh, at Enyobeni on the night in question. And I must emphasize again that the court can only act on established fact. Uh, the suspicions and the probabilities, I might go so far as to say, that he was only one of many are not an issue which the court can take into consideration. Uh, but I do think it is important to emphasize that it is obvious that the control which was being issued in respect of minors on the premises was woefully inadequate at best. Uh, 
In fact, it appears that it was generally, there was no control whatsoever. Certainly on the evening in question, there does not appear to have been. This created an enormous risk. I don't believe that anyone foresaw the tragedy which actually occurred. But in any community, a business uh, dealing in liquor where it is easy for young people or underage persons to obtain liquor due to a total lack of control is a very serious pro social problem. And so far as this matter is concerned, this is the court's major problem or issue. <coughs> We are, I believe, a nation that cares about its children. The legislature has enacted strict responsibility. And it is obviously <coughs> undesirable and dangerous in any community if underage persons have no difficulty in accessing alcohol. I must emphasize once again that these proceedings are not related or are not directly related to the tragic deaths which occurred that evening. The endeavors do not stand to be punished for that, certainly not in these proceedings. They have only been charged with and convicted of a contravention of the Liquor Act. But it is perhaps sobering to think that if there had been proper law enforcement and the miners had been turned away, a lot of the young people who died would not have died. I understand that uh, this has been a great trial for the families of those who died and their friends and the community at large. But the issue of responsibility for the deaths is one that still has to be determined. This court, as I emphasized originally, is not able to take that any further and would be irresponsible to try. Uh, we are all again good there may be unrealistic expectations today when it comes to sentencing. Because of the legitimate emotions which this has caused in the community at large, uh, this in fact places the court in an almost impossible position. Any sentence which I impose today is going to be widely condemned as far too lenient. Uh, 
But as I said initially, the court has to try and balance everybody's rights and interests as fairly as possible. It would be improper to overemphasize one aspect at the cost of the others. I realize that a lot of people are still very angry with the endeavors, whether justifiably or not, I don't want to go into. But I can understand this. I do sympathize with their emotions, their attitudes, but uh, <coughs> I cannot emphasize strongly enough the court has to try and be fair to everybody. The, atti the attitude of the community is a crucial issue, but it is not the only one. The state has emphasized the high penalties which can be imposed in terms of the act. Let me say immediately, it would be extremely unusual for the maximum penalties to be imposed on a first offender. Uh, there is no guidance to be found in decisions of our high courts as matters of this nature very seldom if ever would reach the high court. Uh, the state did mention on Wednesday that the option of a admission of guilt fine was offered to the accused. So clearly the state had no issue with the imposition of a fine for this offence, and quite rightly so. I can mention that uh, for each magisterial district, the chief magistrate does fix an admission of guilt fine for offences of this nature. Now, the admission of guilt fine determined by the Chief Magistrate for the East London District is one of 2,000 Rand. This court is, of course, free to deviate from that where there are circumstances which justify such deviation. <laughs> I mention this merely as a guideline because it would be irresponsible of this court to deviate drastically from the established norms. In this light, I believe that uh, the imposition of a fine would be appropriate. When considering the possible suspension of part of it, I would have to say that that would probably be futile.
It is difficult to imagine any scenario where the two accused would be issued with another liquor license at present, uh, under present circumstances. Um, I don't think I can take it any further than that at this point in time. Having tried to balance all the interests as fairly as possible and consider the, ap the applications which have been made and the interests of the community, uh, each of the accused is sentenced to a fine of 5,000 rand or 100 days imprisonment. Uh, would they be in a position to pay the fine today or do we need to refer it to the prisoner's friend? We need to refer to the prisoner's friend, Your Worship. Okay. The, the, fine to be deferred, Your Worship. the matter will be referred to the prisoner's friend so that arrangements can be made for deferment and payment over a suitable period. Uh, uh, thank you. Everyone can stand down. I trust that is everything. Yes? My thanks to everybody involved. I'm very glad that we finally reached the end of this. Thank you, Worship. You are also, I'm also indebted to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, court adjourns. All right, Madam Me and you, we don't say that. Uh, no, we really. I'm just going to walk with the people here. Are you going to have a I was a